Howdy folks. Um, I'm in the process of finishing off the cab for the Siemens and I've been doing the bright work which generally is coming up pretty well. Um, so while the uh, cabinet varnishing is sort of drying and stuff it's not a lot to talk about so I thought I'd talk about the next project on my list which is this beautiful little thing um, which my uh, next door neighbor uh, brought around the other day. Um, this, uh, what I like about this is it comes complete with its uh, original carrying case. So, this is a Radialvia Groom 41 from 1941. Um, and this is a first for me in many ways. One, it's the first, uh, I'm going to get the light in the right place here. Um, it's the first Bakelite set that I've done. It's also the oldest set that I've done because uh, all the other sets I've done so far have been um, transformer isolated and all that and properly earthed and all that stuff. This is a classic uh, hot chassis, no transformer. Um, even comes complete with the original power cord, which is a resistive power cord. So, since this resistive power cord is 70 plus years old, not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, anyway, uh, let's. Have, uh, there were multiple carry cases options for this radio, apparently. This is the wooden one. There was also a leather uh, version. Um, so, it means uh, so I'm quite happy with the wooden one because I get to uh, restore this as well. And the glass dial has got the usual problem of uh, most of the uh, station names have uh, uh, deteriorated so they're not really visible in the center portion of the dial. But we'll get to all that later, assuming we can get the set working. Um, and uh, what I also like about this is it has all the original knobs, so this thing has been uh, not seen very rough treatment and it's been in storage for a long time in uh, my next door neighbor's grandparents loft um, so uh, I haven't seen I haven't looked at this at all yet so let's have it out of there and see what it looks like okay so here is the thing out of the car out of its carry case um, the Bakelite case looks in pretty good condition. I don't see any major cracks or breaks or chunks missing. Um, these grooves all have to be painted and stuff, but we'll do all that assuming we get the set working. Okay, so here we go. It's pretty tightly compact in there as these things were. Um, there is some, what I can best describe as greasy gunk along here. Not quite sure what that is. I hope that's nothing ominous. Uh, I presume this wire here is the antenna, but uh, we shall see. And so, uh, yeah, it says uh, five tubes or valves. So uh, I've been doing the research and it is the classic um, uh, so no transformer, series filaments, resistive mains cord um, etc etc. So uh, yeah I'll need to um, get my um, isolation transformer sorted out because uh, as I say first time I've worked on a hot chassis. The um, one little uh, Essentially uh, disappointing thing is it clearly says here that um, you can't redo the. It says you can't redo the alignment. It says once everything is set up, everything is glued down in the factory, and so you don't need to touch it again. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> so we're a long way from needing to worry about that. But um, so yeah, so uh, let's see if I can get this thing out of the uh, case. I'm not quite sure what these two connectors are here. Um, as the mains core clearly goes in here, so I'll have to figure out what this is. 
Um, also, there's no back, as you can see in the sense. And uh, it looks like these are either nails or rivets or something, but not screws. So, um, four of them are still there. So, not quite sure um, what we're going to do about that. But, um, anyway, it would seem that uh, to take it out of the case, I just have to remove the three knobs, which are screwed in with, with screws, so hopefully they'll release okay with a bit of coaxing. Uh, and then there's one screw underneath, right there, um, holding the chassis into the cab. So, let's see how that goes. Um, slight correction. To get the uh, chassis out of the case, there's actually three screws. The one that was clearly visible, and then there was two inset on each side at the front. So, uh, it didn't take long to figure out. Um, okay, so, okay, here's the beast out of the, um, out of the case. Um, I don't know, at first glance, this looks like, um, a modification to allow an external speaker to be connected. Um, so, I'll have to check that out a little bit later, because you can see it's got, this is very clearly <laughs> not factory uh, fitted. Um, and, um, yeah, definitely interesting. <laughs> um, as you can see, everything is all tightly packed in here. Uh, lots of mica caps here. Um, and, uh, yeah. Full complement of valves, which is nice. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll need to check that speaker. I mean, obviously a speaker that size is not going to be uh, the best in terms of quality. So one assumes that one of the reasons uh, they might have done this mod is so you could connect a um, perhaps a slightly more um, uh, meaty speaker to give a better sound out. But um, okay, um, I think I'm gonna get rid of this uh, glass dial pretty quickly um, so that uh, I don't risk anything happening to it as we go forward. Um, but yeah, I think at this stage I might just do a quick clean up of it and then put it back together because. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I won't get into this seriously until um, I get to the Siemens set finished. But yeah, it looks like an interesting project. Um, so, uh, right, a little bit of cleaning up. Um, I'd say the big concern is all of the waxy um, deposits around here, which seem to be at their worst all around the base of this um, enclosure, which I presume there's coils and things inside. Um, and uh, yeah, the gunk is everywhere, so I'm going to need to uh, get much better access to the chassis so I can clean it up properly. The other thing I notice is the uh, this valve here is fouling on all the connections on the output transformer and stuff. Um, and so it doesn't sit properly down in its uh, socket. It's tipped off to one side, which can't be good. Um, for the rest, um, I'd say the, uh, the dial cord slips just a little bit, um, but it's probably uh, going to be usable. Uh, because what I really like is the fact that as well as the dial going across from side to side, you have the little counter that uh, counts up as well as you go by. So, um, that's pretty neat. And I assume down here, this is going to be the um, the wave lint, uh, the wave band. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm going to need to get this whole speaker thing off. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get the rest of the chassis.